So in the last lesson, we went ahead and learned how to create a list. Today, we're going to go ahead and create the methods that will pick one of those colored buttons at random. So I'm not going to need an update here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. And I'm going to go ahead and create a function that does not return anything. But I'm going to call it pick random button. But I still like the idea of color. So I'm going to say color. And it does not accept any parameters. And there we go. So to pick a button, I'm going to go ahead and take this array up here that we have with all of our buttons in it. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick one of those buttons at random. And the way we do this is we go ahead and say random dot range. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and use integers because that's what the index for arrays is based on. So we just say zero and we're going to go to button dot length. And we'll close that off. And when we covered arrays, we talked about how button.length is the number of buttons or the number of elements in that array. So in this case, we actually have four. If we come back in, look at our game object here. We actually have four of them. So the length is going to be equal to this. But keep in mind that they're numbered 0, 1, 2, 3. So if we jump back into the code and take a look here, since we're using an integer, the last number is exclusive. So in other words, this is actually going to return an integer between zero and whatever the button length is minus one. In this case, it will be three. So I'm going to get a number between zero and three, which is perfect because that's exactly what our elements are. Now, when you're dealing with floats, this last number is actually inclusive. So let's say I was dealing with floats and I had it from zero to 10.1. Then that would mean I could pick any number between zero and 10.1 including the 10.1 itself. But for this, I'm just dealing an integer, so that's all I need. So I'm going to go ahead and store this somewhere. So I'm going to say int uh, rnd for random. So I've now got the index of the button I want to press. Now let's go ahead and figure out what exactly about this button do we want to save. We could just store the index in here, in which case we store the ints. But let's go ahead and take a look at our button class. On the back of my mind, I want to go ahead and create an enum. We covered those in class a couple days ago. And actually go ahead and get that enum and store that. But honestly, for what we have here, what do we have? A wake, start, we don't need to look at any of that. We don't need that. All we really need is some public method to actually press the button, which we don't need to get yet. But I am going to go ahead and add it right under the reset button. Actually, I want it right above the on mouse down button. The on mouse down button is going to be used when our player is cl clicking on the, the button. And this AI press button, or we'll just call it press button, which will be public. This is going to be used for when the AI is picking his random numbers. So I'm not going to return anything for now. And I'm just going to say press button. We're not going to pass any parameters in. And what we're going to do is go ahead, take all of this, copy it out, well, cut it out, put it in here. And in here, I'm just going to call press button. That way there, our player still has a way to be able to, to use the mouse to click the button and call the function and still have everything going off. Now, I know I'm probably going to want something down here. When we get into the event section, when you ha have the assignment to go ahead and add the events to here, this is probably where you're going to do it, right? But there we go. We have something public we can use with the game ma manager. So I'm going to come in and I want to go ahead and first, uh, let's go ahead and actually press that button first. So that's button, the R&D index dot press button that should go ahead and press it and right after we press it we're going to go ahead and store it so color order dot add and we're just going to go ahead and add r and d i'm going to go ahead and save that off i'm going to come up here let's get rid of all this debug stuff we we're doing at the beginning don't need any of it anymore i am going to create one method called play game which is just going to be a void for now and we'll put that in and this is actually where our game is going to start for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, pick random color. And when the game first starts up, I want to call this as well. So play. I know it looks like it's just a bunch of function calls, but I'm just setting up the framework for later on because I know I want to be able to do certain things independently of others. And I'm just going to break those up into different methods. So if we start the game now, it should go ahead, pick one of the buttons at random, press it, and then go and add it to our array. Uh, let's go, we'll check that out. Then we'll go ahead, we'll throw it in a loop and pick some, a series of random numbers or colors. Uh, there we go. It pressed before we actually got everything set up. Let me try that again. So it did red. I need a slight pause in there. Cause it looks like my game is not starting up fast enough. 
So I pressed blue that time. Try one more time. Oh, it's doing red. So let's go ahead and actually get it to do, I don't know, five different buttons. And I'm just gonna throw it in a quick for loop. We'll save that off, we'll jump right back in. And I guess I should have actually stopped the game. Let's try it again, it should pick five now. And we notice that we actually do need to set up some sort of coroutine so that it doesn't pick all five automatically. We'll start up one more time if we keep a look here at the color order. But there we go, we picked five. We just gotta slow it down. So in the next video, we'll look at coroutines. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>